This morning we are sitting with uh, Tahira Mazhar Ali, who for many of us from my generation has been somewhat of a role model, um, not only because she has been very active in progressive and left struggles, but also uh, very active in the women's movement for a very long time. Uh, at the moment, uh, she continues to be active in these issues and in these areas, uh, but is also the General Secretary of the Democratic Women's Association uh, in Pakistan. Um, we welcome her uh, today. Um, thank you very much for your time. Um, we'd just like to start off a little in terms of uh, your background, because coming from the background, and I know this about you, yes. from uh, a very feudal family, how did you, uh, uh, you know, where were you born, what was the family like, and... Uh... Uh, Bunny, I was, I was born, yes, you're quite right, I was born in a, in a feudal background, and uh, my father was uh, a political human being. Uh, and, uh, but there was one very special thing in those days, and that was that they never tried to make us bigoted in any religious forms and so on and so forth, and we were allowed to speak out our minds, no matter what they were. Uh, my father was very liberal that way, in this respect that he allowed us to say what we liked. He might not have liked it all the time, but he allowed us to say what we liked and uh, uh, sort of uh, come out with our opinions. Uh, first thing it happened, I think I was quite influenced by a number of girls in our school in Queen Mary's. Where did you go to school? Queen Mary's. In Lahore. In Lahore. You were born in Lahore? No, I was born in Wa. In Wa. In Wa. And how many brothers and sisters are you? Oh, well, I've got uh, five brothers and four sisters. Uh, where, uh, I, I was born in Wa, uh, but I was in Queen Mary's. Just for the record, who was your father? My father was uh, Sikandar Hayat, and uh, he was. Uh, and when he involved in the unionist politics in uh, Punjab and uh, was considered quite pro-British. Uh, but uh, now when I see, compare it with today's world, I feel that he was not very, I mean, in many things it was much better than what's happening, to, <laughs> happening, to, <laughs> happening today. At that time, at the age of 13 and 14, uh, one was critical, you know, that he was... Uh, with so from Wa, you were born in Wa, but in the Wa family, you lived in Lahore. We lived in Lahore. So Yes, I grew up, grew, up, grew up in Lahore, went with my father to Bombay because then he became the state governor for some time to Bombay and Calcutta. And by the time I was 11, I came back. And then I was in Queen Mary's. Now, Queen Mary's was a very sort of an imperialist school for the, uh, like Aitchin College, you know, the Maharaja's daughter. You mixed with Maharani's and so on and so forth. But there was a small element which did talk of national movements, Congress, my first uh, thing which made me political was that it was uh, Jawaharlal was in Lahore and I, my age was then 13 and some months less than 14, let's say 13 and a half. I asked my principal whether he could come to our college school and see us. And she retaliated, no, it's a Parda school, you can't come. He can't come to uh, uh, Queen Mary's. I said, but Odish Shankar came a few days ago and we performed, we swam before him. But why can't Jawaharlal come? He's one of the most uh, recognized leader of the, you know, uh, anti imperialist uh, movement here. So I was then expelled from school. Uh, and I must tell you this thing, that at that time one could be expelled in spite of one's having, uh, uh, being, you know, belonging to the sort of elitist <laughs> families. Because my father was in the um, uh, chief minister of Punjab, but I was asked to leave school and I was expelled for six months and asked to write, I think, 1,000 times uh, <laughs> that uh, I, I will not uh, disobey school rules, so, which meant nothing. But that was how it started. And then, of course, I was very, very interested in the movement because... In which movement are we in, talking? In, I'm talking of the anti imperialist movement now. Mm. It was much easier uh, to mobilize people for anti imperialist movement than it was to mobilize people for your own dictatorship in your own country. It was easier because then everybody was with you. People who were not fully uh, political were also, also anti imperialist to some extent. But you said 13 you started yeah. thinking these things. What about the rest of your 
brothers and sisters, were they like No, you? no, they were not like me. But it, it can happen, Bunny, as you know, <laughs> that, you know, they were brought up in that atmosphere. Uh, maybe I was, you know, I had more sort of guts, maybe. Guts. Where do you come in the family? What number I come you? Uh, number, I'm number, uh, I'm number five. I'm in the middle. I'm in the middle. And, uh, but my, you were very close to your father. I was very close to my father because my father, because I, at least I could discuss things with his friends even if, I, if he didn't like the things I said. And uh, because my elder sisters were married and uh, my uh, Joala and all these people coming to our homes and so forth. And uh, I had the privilege, let us say, to be able to meet all these people, you know, face to face and sit down and talk to them. And the excitement of meeting these great people was, uh, was immense. Uh, I remember the first time I met Jawahar Lal when he came to our house, my father turned around and said, here's a very, very great admirer of yours. And my face became absolutely beetroot red because I was. So you were involved in the national I was in, uh, involved in the national movement. Uh, uh, what years are these? Uh, they were 41, 40, 40, 41. So the whole the Muslim thing had not registered. You had no religious something? Uh, uh, Bunny, in our household, the whole atmosphere was religious, I tell you how, because my father was a very religious man. But the religion was not overpowering. You know, it was like, for instance, in Muharram, we are not Shias, but in Muharram, no music was allowed in the house. It was automatic. If we wanted to listen to music, to put it very, mm -hmm. my father wouldn't hear it. What about your mother? You haven't mentioned uh, My mother was, I can't say what I, my mother was not that religious. I mean, she must be religious. But she was a cousin of a family member? No, she was. She was an outsider. My mother was a complete outsider. From where? Uh, she was from Amrissa, from a Kashmiri family. She was very young. And... Uh, but feudal families normally marry among themselves. They did get married amongst themselves, but then they, uh, my, my elder uh, my mother, who was my, my father, she died. She mm -hmm. died. Then he got married to her, her sister. And uh, then he fell in love with my mother, so he got married to her. Mm -hmm. But I, I must say that in our household, it was uh, a, one thing was absolutely tremendous that to this day we are ten brothers and sisters from three different mothers. Uh, but you can't, I we can't say. I mean, I'm very attached. I'm very attached to my elder brother and sister because this attachment started right from our youth. My father never, you know, there was not steps and things allowed in our house. So it was, it was one big family, let's say. And another very good thing, which has worked till now, has been uh, that we were not taught ever to despise any other religion. For instance, my father had many friend, Hindu friends. Narendra Nath was a Hindu Masabite, mm -hmm. a very, very close friend of my father's. But when he came, my father touched his feet. And therefore, we learned to respect other religions. Our own religion automatically in our homes that during Ramzan it was a festival because my father did cooking and mm. Eid was, mm. you know, it was not taught. It was there. Mm. But did you ever pray or have... We, were, we, were, we had more, we used to teach us. And we, you know, so you went through all we of went that? Through all that. Yes, we went through all that. But how did you feel? At what point did you start thinking about it? Or... I, uh, uh, Bunny, I couldn't, de I couldn't depend on religion for my, uh, to soothe me. It didn't soothe me. It soothed my father because I saw him saying his prayers. And he was really as if humble before God. And it depressed me. I won't say it didn't depress me because I thought, here's a belief. And it's so tremendous. But it didn't soothe me. I didn't depend on religion to safeguard me. It never affected you me. You didn't pray for examinations and no. God making pass and all that? No. no, I never did. Never did. My, uh, my other uh, brothers and sisters did. I asked, I was told, ask it, yeah, me go to and so on and so forth. And, but it's, I, whatever the reason, I can't say. But, uh, and I was, at that time, I was not influenced by anyone to feel this. Later on, I was deeply impressed by Mazar because he was student leader, older than me, about eight or nine years older than me. But I was impressed because everybody in school used to talk. You know, Mazar did this and he's gone to jail and he's gone to, uh, then he was also a cousin, and when he came to our home, I was impressed by the way he, they refused to go into ICS, mm -hmm. they refused to take in any government jobs, they were MA, double MAs, so on and so forth. So all this impressed me, but I didn't know very much. You know, I like innocent But people. even he, 
from coming from the same family. Uh, Their family was much more religious than ours. I know, and and yet he was uh, very different in his own family too. Uh, uh, yes, Mahmud, uh, his elder brother was also yes. uh, like, like that. Mahmud, Mahmud was also yes. like, uh, and uh, later on, Mahmud continued um, doing this. He was, uh, uh, I think, it was the atmosphere, buddy. There was quite a lot of atmosphere of a, a, a intellectual atmosphere amongst the progressives at, at that period. And they took pride in doing things and they pride in learning and so on and so forth. So I think it, it, maybe it was that. Because our home atmosphere and all was, um, it was quite, quite, quite different. So while you were in school, in Queen Mary, you did uh, get active or, I mean, at least... Uh, Bunny, I was like, no, Bunny, I was not, I, I wouldn't say because we were not allowed to get active, but I was always outspoken. Mm -hmm. For instance, they said, you are no, you are for, for instance, Did I would, come then? then no, he was not allowed to come. Uh -huh. But, uh, for instance, they asked us to, you know, if girls had Union Jack on their coats, it doesn't matter. But if you put on Congress flags, they said, take it off. And I would fight back. Well, we can have Union Jacks, there's also uh, politics. There's British politics. You know, that much. So you were with Congress. At that point, you hadn't registered Jinnah and the Muslim League? I did register Jinnah about two years later, because he was very, he used to come to our house because of my father. But he never. But your father was with the Unionist Party. But he was uh, he was wooed by these ah, people also ah, because he was a Muslim. Yes. So Jinnah came, he used to come to our house, and I remember at one dinner, very close dinner party, I talked to him. He says, "Why are you with the? Uh, why are you with uh, the Congress?" I said, "Because they're anti imperialists And why not Muslim? I said, "Because they're not." It was quite simple for me. I said, "You I, felt that Jinnah was not anti imperialist I thought that he may, Bunny, I thought that he was not, uh, uh, not anti imperialist like the Congress was. Mm -hmm. First, being in the Congress, you heard Joan Lal talking of Spanish Civil War, mm -hmm. and you read something about Spanish Civil War. What did you read about Jinnah? We had, I had a lot of literature on uh, Joan Lal, and I used to correspond with him, and I got uh, many letters from him, and the books he recommended, and the books he sent me, Glimpses of World History, which I read. Uh, 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 letters to his daughter. Yes. So all that impressed me deeply. Mm -hmm. While Jinnah uh, had nothing to be, uh, to impress us with. Mm -hmm. so Jinnah's own writings were not. Uh, there were no writings. I don't, at least I don't know. Yeah, I never know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then I corresponded with uh, Surudhi Naidu, who impressed me deeply. Yes. Um, tremendous woman. I have never seen such a simple looking woman with such great personality in my entire life. In my entire life. She was noticeable anywhere. And she was a brilliant speaker and a brilliant poetess. I mean, it was not that I knew very well. Uh, I was at a meeting here in um, Lahore College, which is Lahore College now. And I'd only written, to, I used to write letters to her, but I didn't know, uh, know her personally. So when she was sitting there, there were about 2,000 people, 2,000 women sitting in the hall. She says, Tyra, listen. Bunny, I can't tell you how pleased. I was about 10, about 17 or 18. I was so pleased that she would called my name. And how did she recognize me? You know, because I just wrote, Tara, come here. How's your father? How's your father-in-law? She's quite friendly with my father-in-law. By that time, you were married? I was married, yes. What age did you get married? I got married when I was 16 and a half. How did that happen, you married? It happened, Bunny, because I don't think anybody agreed to the marriage. My father was... Not particularly keen that I should get married. You, you finished school by the time? I finished school. And you were in college? Uh, I was going to join college, but I hadn't joined college. And what happened? You fell in love? Uh, yes, I, I was very fond of mother. I thought, you know, I'll get married to her. Why don't you say you fell in love? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I can't say. No. I really can't say. Because I tell you why. Because now when you grow older, you feel that love is little, little different than that excitement. Mm. You know, excitement to be... Uh, uh, fond of somebody, you know, who is a, a political leader and a student's leader and so on and so on. And I was so young and there were so many other girls. Mm -hmm. So you felt like that and... Uh, but did you have to fight for that marriage or not? Your I had to fight. I had to fight. Because it must have had no job. And the family is always... You know, he was a cousin, so that he was, a cousin, he was yes. all right. He was, he was all right that way, but he must have a job. And uh, he was too anti imperialist too involved in pol uh, left politics. And my father was too right. In mm -hmm. respect that he was a unionist, uh, and that was a slight hindrance, but eventually. It was but Uncle Mazhar at that point was uh, studying in Lahore, or what was uh, he? He was in student politics. Yes, he was student politics. He was, uh, By that time, but he was a student politics, but with the left. Or? With the left, entirely with the left. He was the president of the Communist Party. Uh, no, uh, no, I wonder. 
about that part, I do not know whether he was a member of the Communist Party, but he was a leader of the students and he was the president of the All Student India Students Federation. And uh, they stood on, they saw the things started. And they, and they saw political interests started. And, so, so. and I think I was quite prepared. Well, you must have been already involved to that extent politically or had the same thinking that a man like him would impress you. Yes. A jobless political yes. uh, firebrand. I mean, uh, he was. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that is what he was. And it was uh, uh, the, the, the rishtas which you know how to come to come to feudal families. And then also, not they don't come for a particular day, the girl is. They sort of very nice, or that. they also come for the families, you know, this family and that family. And uh, most of them were big landlords and very rich people and so on and so forth. And, uh, uh, but that never appealed to me that, uh, you know, there'll be cars or this, you know, mm -hmm. it just didn't appeal to me. But, but it didn't occur to you that you were married so young and no uh, family? I, I, one thing when I was sure that if I get married, I, one of the reasons for my getting married very early was also this, that I'll be able to get involved in politics at once. You know, I'd be independent. Nobody can then say anything to me. You can't go out. You can't meet this one. You can't go and meet this people, this person. You can't go to these meetings. And I'd be completely independent. One of the reasons was that. What was the atmosphere like? This is now what, what in the forties. Mm -hmm. uh, do you remember what, what, how old were you in the Labour Revolution, for example? I was uh, when it was for uh, what year? Was it 14, 13 or fourteen? Did it affect you? Did you think? No, this the, was about? Uh, but it was like this that lots of people had come from other places to stay with us. At my house, at my father's house, and we had taken other houses, people from Hyderabad, Dakkan, and so on and so forth. So we was, it was, the, the excitement was there. But for me, nothing more. I went to the, when the Lahore resolution was, uh, thing, I went with my father there. There was a, and you know, meeting these people and so forth. So. Just the importance of meeting these people. But that I was impressed, I don't think so. It didn't, it didn't sort of impress me deeply. But uh, discussion of partition in your house, um, your father, you, Uncle Mazar, etc. What was uh, Nobody. I, uh, we, the, the, the partition was never discussed at that time. It was when the discussion was passed. Mm -hmm. Then people started talking, but not fully believing in it. You know, we didn't believe that it would happen. Mm -hmm. It happened much later because uh, people started talking of partition, but not clear what it should be. Mm -hmm. And I was too young to know, get into the depth of it. Mm -hmm. No, I, I didn't. So you married at 16, but what year was that? I married a little older than 16. It was 1942, December. 42. Your father was then actually in Lahore. My father, it was a great tragedy because the, when I got married, the day I got married, and I was leaving in Mazar, that night my father died and the news came into the train that my father had died. So there was no honeymoon, there was no such thing, and by going over all the day we came back immediately. And the same house, which was uh, sort of, uh, you know, festival and all that, and, uh, was, became uh, sort of just matam. So it was a big tragedy at that time. Three of you were married, brothers and sisters, yes. on the same day. Two of my brothers. My brothers got married. Legendary wedding. Yes. I think they have children heard about it. That Yes. There was this grand wedding where yes. you got married. Uh, my two wedding. brothers, elder brothers, and myself. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, it was, you know, it was a, it was a big wedding, and all these things coming. Up. Not that I wasn't half interested in big weddings, but nevertheless they happened. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it, uh, the, uh, my father dying the last day became a sort of a big tragedy. I mean, I got married on the 23rd, my brother 24th, my brother, another brother on the 25th, and my father died on the 26th. So, it was that one. And my father was, at that time, 48 years old. But obviously, it was a heart attack, and by then... He was, was chief minister. He was chief minister. So, from 42 to 47, uh, what were your... Were you involved? Were you living? What was happening around? It was. Uh, I I was not that deeply involved in Muslim uh, Muslim League politics. I was quite involved uh, with the Communist Party of India, and I did a lot of work amongst the women and uh, went into the mahallas here. And, uh, we had our, you know, mahalla meetings, women's problems, and so on and so forth. Uh, I was involved in that, but not directly involved in Muslim League politics. Then eventually, the Communist Party of India decided. But at that time, the Communist Party of India was not was against partition. Uh, no, it wasn't. The, a, a pamphlet came out 
uh, by Adhikari. That because all the Muslims of India are demanding this, partition should be given. And I remember that the, that pamphlet was given to me to go and deliver it to Jinnah. So I was the first one to go and give it to Jinnah that this is the line of the Communist Party of India. That they agree that because they said, uh, I'm not sure, too sure Bani whether I agreed, but I was too young to contradict. You know, I do not know because my heart was not there for this. For many reasons, because... What were the reasons? Many reasons, breaking of friendships, you know, you were so used to having Hindus and Sikhs living here. You know, it was a different atmosphere. You said you won't see these people again. So it was uh, quite a... Uh, I, I didn't deeply believe in it, let, let's say that. I didn't, deep, I, I didn't think it would happen. But, uh, uh, and then when the party decided that, uh, no, we should fully support it. Uh, we were working with these Muslim League women, Beg Mutasad Dokusan, Beg Miftakhar and so on and so forth. You know, working with them, going out with them, uh, trying to mobilize people for the elections, Muslim League elections. Mm. And uh, then it became, uh, you know, sort of, I want to interest. But it was entirely because the Communist Party decided. Mm. So you were then, because this was a party position, uh, in favor of, the yes. At that point. The communists supported it. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and you decided to stay in Pakistan. Yeah, I, no, but this was my home. This, I, Lahore, only that reason. Only my this was my home, Lahore. Ever you had to leave your own home. But the communist party got very split up because of this. Uh, no, it didn't get split up at that. They went away. Mm. Uh, uh, there was hardly any party left here. That's what most I mean. Yes, that yes, that yes. most of them. In that sense, that most stayed in India yes. and very few communists. Yes. Uh, 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 were you then active with CPP, the Communist Party of Pakistan? Yes, I was. Yes, I was. And when did you get involved with women's issues? Uh, I mean, you were at that point, but then uh, say Anjuman. Uh, Anjuman, Anjuman Jumhuriyat Pakistan. Hmm. Well, Anjuman Jumhuriyat Pakistan was formed immediately after partition, 1948 49, because we thought we must have a women's platform to work on. And the first meeting of the Communist Party took shape with the women's organization because we went to parachute factory where refugees had come from that end and we had a meeting because at that time uh, uh, Anjuman had not been formed. But women first conducted that meeting under the auspices of Communist Party and there were about 10 to 15,000 people. You remember partition? Well, I remember partition when I was about 20 years old, 21. What, what, why is it that so many Muslims came here or did they really see it as a dream or uh, and the, the butchery and the scale of it and the Muslim League had not envisaged this or the Communist Party? Did you expect that the scale of people coming Bani, and going? I that? never even thought. You see, I'm just telling you, I never thought seriously about it. But I think that Mr. what uh, Mr. Jinnah thought was that there would be partition. He would continue going to Bombay staying in his residence. People will be coming and going. Yes. It will be all right. It will be just a partition. Mm -hmm. But when these killings took place, I think it was a terrible shock for him also. I, will, I must say that. Because I don't think he thought uh, that there would be so many killings. People came there because uh, they got frightened because they said that, you know, Hindus won't let you live here. And the, most, the propaganda was on the most horrible fashion. And people made a lot of money during this period. Uh, the whole corruption started in Pakistan over the Avaki property. Avaki property was already taken by many people who were already... Were you involved at all with rehabilitation and uh, yes, I camps, etc.? Yes, yes. What were your memories of those? Uh, camps memory was absolutely horrible because when you went to these camps, women said, It was always somebody, their daughters lost, their sons not found, their... Uh, no place for them to stay, they were not getting anything, and they were just fed up. They were just fed up. They were very, very unhappy because nothing was happening. Of course, very easy, nothing would happen very easily, but uh, even otherwise, they were rehabilitated. It took a long time for them to get rehabilitated. And all the rich people who came from there, they of course said that their background was Mughal from God knows which, and they took a lot of uh, uh, things. But the poor remained poor. And I remember that then when our organization, we built houses for them, ourselves with our own hands. 
in Ganesh offices, lots of houses have been passed by Democratic Women's Association, plus the women who came from Ludhiana, Amritsar, so on and so forth. They assimilated easily because we spoke the same language. That's mm -hmm. a very important question. Now, when you see now the Mahajir question in Karachi, it is because they never learned the language. These people already spoke Punjabi when they came, but then years you didn't know whether they were from the hot Amritsar Ludhiana. Mm -hmm. So nobody ever talked about, nobody ever talked of uh, Mohajirs in Punjab. Mm -hmm. Nobody talked of Mohajirs in Punjab. They were just, uh, uh, just assimilated and uh, we worked. But the disappointment was very great that this had to happen. And uh, they, were un, uh, they were not satisfied. Many women, I remember, at a meeting, we had a meeting, and then, uh, oh, this, mm -hmm. okay. what's happening to us here? Initially, the state was uh, not an Islamic republic. Uh, it became an Islamic republic much later. Mm -hmm. um, what was the, uh, I mean, A, what, are your, uh, react, what was your reaction to that? Was, do you think it was meant to be an Islamic state? Is it what people wanted? for it to be in Islamic State. The people say that you were working with, either through Anjuman or the Communist Party, etc. I, uh, I, Bernie, I think that uh, as far as um, um, Jinnah was, Mr. Jinnah was concerned, uh, I don't think he visualized an Islamic State of uh, uh, Mullah's ruling Pakistan, no, out of question. Because bef even before when we, we talked, he says it's not going to be that. Uh, well, what the things he said I can't mm -hmm. repeat, but he said that it's going to be, as I'm telling you, he said he'll go to Bombay. He'll be coming back from Bombay. He'll be coming, he's staying in Karachi's part of the time and part of the time. So obviously it wasn't visualizing that sort of state. Uh, I think that the, mainly it was that people thought that the Hindus were the big businessmen and in competition we always lost. It was economic. It was economic. And that you're here, we'll be able to do everything ourselves. I mean, that's what I heard. I never heard him. Uh, Except it one thing which came as a shock because there was a drama where we, we always clapped. And this a very senior Muslim League woman said, no, in, amongst the Muslims you don't clap. And I was taken aback. I was taken aback. But uh, otherwise, uh, I don't think they visualized a state with mullahs and uh, all that. It would be a democratic state where, uh, all right, TK, we haven't got this, they will be sort of, they'll assert themselves and so on and so forth. And many of us, after this thought, hey, yes, it, well, it was viable and it, it is possible that it uh, might turn out to be the Switzerland of the subcontinent, which it could have been, if, the, if it had taken the right path. But uh, what was our path? Immediately, IMF, America. I mean, immediately, the colonialists leave us and we hand ourselves over to the new colonialists, please take us over. It is not that they, we please take, take us over, please look after us. Now, that was not the path which we were looking forward to. We thought if it, it's a new country, we could, you know, democratize it, there'll be less poverty, there'll be, you know, equality. We didn't think it would be communism, no, 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 no. But equality, people's standards would raise and so on and so forth. But then what happened was a sort of uh, snatching of buildings and snatching of this. I'll tell you a very interesting thing in this that a Hindu woman, left a lot of things with one of my relations in the home. He had a huge house, carpets and so on and so forth, trusting the family and so on and so forth. When she came to take them back, all the things were lying there. And this lady, who happened to be related to me, said, there's nothing here. She just kept quiet and left. So these, I'm just telling you that these horrid things happened. Horrid things happened, I mean. They trusted you that you know your family was very big. They will never, at least they'll never do it. But poor people, people who left their jewelry things with the poor people, with the tailor, tailor master, mm -hmm. with the, someone, yes. they handed back the things. Yes, so the whole the states and the like, horror yeah. were just taken over that way and people, mm -hmm. uh, So that was the thing, and that was the disappointment which you know was created amongst the masses of the people. And then it was just like musical chairs. We just went round and round the chairs, whoever could take the chair, and the next person would come. I must say the indifference started right from the beginning. Because for very few months, for very, a year maybe, 
it started, the deterioration started, the bureaucracies started interfering. And uh, the whole setup became dirty. And people like us, who were not, I don't say that we have any great or anything like that, but people became antagonistic against them. This will, this can't work. And this changed the whole uh, attitude towards the, the, towards the state. But it was never changed, as you know, when yeah, you started giving it, one person came and did this, and they came and passed all sorts of laws which were against this, and they, were, they became complete stooges of American imperialism. So much so that once, I remember that an American came to us to say, ask Mother to withdraw an editorial from Pakistan Times. And when Mother said no, he went back annoyed, sent a message that Pakistan Times was the most efficient pro-communist paper in the whole of Southeast Asia. And it must, must finish. And it was originally finished by Ayub Khan then. So after partition, um, in terms of what Uncle Mazhar and you were doing, I mean, other than your policy, what were you doing professionally? Were you Mazhar was, was, was a journalist? Mazhar was first doing work in the Kassan committees. Mm -hmm. He was working in the Kassan committees in Wa, in Wa, and salt mines, mm -hmm. Kyura. And I was doing work in the women in the villages, you know, organizing them, getting them to know their own rights. So when did you have your children? Uh, uh, Tariq, was Tariq was born. born uh, Tariq was uh, no. Tariq was born. Tariq was born in 1943. And so you carried uh, I took him around. Yes, I took him around. He was with me, and that was uh, a part of Tariq's education because uh, Tariq was educated like that. He went to Kasan committee meetings when he was about three years old. <laughs> <laughs> He was four years old, he was sitting in Mirza Ibrahim at the trade mm. union conference mm. and uh, he was thinking atom bomb, atom mm. bomb when he was <laughs> <laughs> about five. So he, but uh, again, Bunny, in our house, in, in my own children, uh, there was no indoctrination that, you know, I have read Marxism, Leninism, this, that. no. It was just atmosphere. Just as there was atmosphere in our house of no religious, uh, you know, sort of suppression, mm. it, at the same time, in our house, it was never that, you know, but progressive writers meetings were held in our house, downstairs near the garage. Mm -hmm. Democratic Women's Association was in the garage. Uh, Kassan committees were in downstairs in the garage. State union meetings were held in my house. So it was just became a part of the education for, uh, for Tariq. Mm -hmm. He grew up in that uh, atmosphere. Uh, what about your own, you, you said that you did have this atmosphere of religion around you as a child, but didn't have a... Mm -hmm. When did you actually make a break or completely move away from it? Uh, was there any conscious moment when you said, I don't believe? No. But it was like that. It was not. Uh, for instance, I think, when I worked in the trade union, and by, by trade union, I mean trade union vibes and so on, so, for many years, never has anybody questioned me, have you said your prayers? Do you say your prayers? Their questions are, what's going to happen to us? Will our children get education? Can you help us? I've sold this, I've sold that to educate my child. Will he get a job? Main questions. Will we have water here? Will it come? You, these people say, don't fight. How can we not fight? Because this salary which our husband brings, we have to fight along with him. This was their own calculation. Right? Not take it, no, go ahead and fight. But they themselves said, how can we fight? So it was religious questions are, I feel, always put on them to ask back. I don't feel that they feel like I, because they think the religion is a private thing. I really feel that the religion should never be questioned in any form. It is the private affair of anyone. I think it is a very sensitive uh, thing. It should be, uh, they can do what, but it should never be uh, oppressive religion which should tell us what to do and what not to do and if women can't go out and women can't smile and women if they smile are bad and the man if he smiles is very nice and so on and so forth. This all nonsense. What I say is it's a private thing. It is between one human being and God if they believe in. Fine. But you don't. I won't say, I, I would rather not speak on that question. Mm. But it is, you know, it, because it is a sensitive question. Mm. But it is that it, it uh, uh, it, nothing should be imposed. But do women ever say, and did they say at that point that, you know, uh, you're asking us to organize or we want this, but you see actually uh, this is against Islam or it's not Islamic. They never raised never. this issue. This issue was never raised. Mm -hmm. Women, even even today, women don't say that. Why does the left have a reputation that it was 
because it's anti-Islam. In Pakistan, they made mistakes and basically by talking about secularism, one didn't understand the cultural context of um, Pakistan. Uh, Bani, again, listen. Uh, left will always be considered anti-Islam because these people feel that we are not for religion as they think. Communist Party has never said that their communists can't, don't need, should be always believe in it. They are trade union workers. I think Mr. Abraham, he probably believes in God. But the thing is, you don't talk of religion as the main thing, which is the source of great comfort to you in any way. For instance, you will remember that when the Islamic conference took place here, the first speaker, Boomer then, he was not a communist, but the first speaker said that by all means read Quran, but ayats cannot fill our stomach, stomachs. That is a thing. You can't take everything, you know, God will put right and so forth. You have to fight for these things. You have to fight for your rights. You have to fight and struggle. You can't say that give up struggle and all will be well. But we don't believe in it. No left, I think, in any left, any sort of left will believe in this. But you've never found that religion was an impediment uh, to organize, etc. Do you think that, I mean, this very famous Marxist saying, Marxist, uh, I mean, Marx himself said it, religion is the opium of the masses, that it dulls, it, it makes people accept things that they wouldn't normally accept because of the afterlife or something. Yeah. Bunny, I feel, let me tell you frankly that in countries like ours, which are poverty-stricken countries, if they didn't believe in God, I think they'd die much earlier. So they do need it. They do need it. Unless the struggle becomes so big that they realize this is... They need God. They need peace. They need pandits. Mm -hmm. They need all these people to go to. Hey, you know, will I have a child? They go to pandit. Will like, my son get a job? They go. Because what is... For the treatments, they go and have this... Uh, mud from the very, because there are no doctors. Tomorrow you set up a clinic, a good hospital near six villages. I'll see how many women will go to this place. They won't. But they have nothing else. So they, you know, have faith in these people, these things, to believe in it. And the other people who dominate them and who sort of eat their labor also say, hey, Khuda ki marzi hai. God gives you. Gharib ko. So religion is used to keep to keep people down and to pacify them. To, to pacify them, them, to lull them, there is, there is no doubt. Is. If the religion is dynamic, they will say, fight for your rights. After all, there are certain religions who fight for the rights. The Catholics are fighting for the rights of the Nic in Nicaragua. They are fighting in Chile. They are Catholics. They also want to suppress the people. But they, they if, fight. In one side they say, there is a fighting religion, Islam. On the other side they tell the Poor people get drowned in this love. Nothing more. Don't try. It is God's will. Everything is God's will. You see, it's God's will. You, so it is a, a, a great contradiction, where these, especially where these mullahs go and uh, 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 say, uh, say these things. But I don't feel that the religion should be brought into politics at all. I feel it's a private matter. It should be between one human being and God. But if it is used against, it is, if it is used to lull people, then do you think those who want to awaken, it, awaken people, have, do you think that they should? They should definitely tell them that the religion which the mullahs are putting forward before you is not the religion. It is a religion to put you off to sleep. They should say it. They should say, they should say it. it. So they should talk on it. They should talk. If, they, if it comes to that, if it comes to argue, they should talk and say, no, religion... This religion is just to keep you drowsy. In the last uh, 12 years or since 77, uh, we've had uh, the state, I mean, although we became an Islamic Republic in, 70, in 56 and increasingly, etc. Even under Bhutto, in fact, the 73 constitution has this, uh, to my mind, a problem in it. One, that it is still in a, very much an Islamic Republic. Mm. And secondly, that it does say that within the next 20 years, we will make all laws according to um, Sharia, which is a problem in the 73 constitution too, mm -hmm. which some of us at that time were also battling against. And yes, it should not be passed yes. and etc. because this clause should not be there. Uh, you can just say Islamic Republic and forget about yes. it. 
but that happened and then Bhutto also re overreacted to the movement against him and passed some Islamic laws. He started then passing later. them and made Friday the holiday and all that. But then the main thrust, the main problem came with Zia who used Islam, the state used Islam, not only to suppress uh, people for whatever to keep them down, to justify himself being in power. He changed the laws and I feel to a large extent changed society. The thinking, a psyche has been changed in 12, 12 years is a long time. The present generation of 20 and 25, half their lives have gone in this uh, type of propaganda. Uh, one question on that, uh, to, to start that, do you think that this has uh, had any impact at all on people? Uh, uh, Islamization? Islamization? Money, it has. Let me say that I think that what Zia thought, I, I feel, he thought that implement these things quickly, all the things which are, you know, which are half made up by him, and so martial law Islam, mm -hmm. and then nobody will be able to withdraw it. Which has happened. It will become difficult to withdraw. I mean, for instance, take Bhutto Saab, and you think, racist, but kar do, ye kar do, kar do. chutti, you know, you could withdraw it. Halaki, people think that having Friday as a holiday, you have three holidays, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, what business do you do? Mm. You can't. You can't. But the, once you implement these things, it's very difficult to say, you know, leave it. Uh, but most of the people are feeling relieved, there is no doubt in my mind. You are feeling freer. You are feeling freer for many things. That in the name of Islam, you would, I, I don't think that Benazir would uh, touch us if he demonstrated against uh, uh, some, um, uh, some law against the women. But that we, mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I think we might be helping her. Yes. And uh, not, as you see today, to take today's paper. I think a lot of things are going to come out of the role which mafia played in the whole thing. Mafia played a big role. And, and ma drug mafia. Drug mafia. Mm. It became, uh, Zia developed it into a drug mafia. Yes. And he wanted to use drug mafia for his own benefit. And it will come out that drug mafia was heavily involved in all the things which happened in your country. If but that was an extension of the military action. Extension of the military action. But extension of what he calls Islam. Yes. Also. <laughs> you see? This is martial law Islam. As people in Amrit uh, Mutha uh, said, Ameriki Islam na manzoor. So it was like that. But the thing is, Zia did the worst for his country. Because one whole generation has become drug addicts and illiterate. You didn't find people coming out except signing their names about religion. Mm -hmm. Or anything, they knew nothing about anything. People were not allowed to ask questions. If you ask questions, the Jamaat people from university turned you out. So what did he do? He was the biggest criminal because he destroyed one whole generation. And for them to revive and to recover, I don't know. If he can help him to do that, we have created a great revolution. But during this time, one of the things that he used, I mean, Islamization, in fact, he didn't even bother about Islam in many areas. Uh, he came down from his first speech very hard on women. Yes. It was easier to lock up women, ah, easier ah. to pass a new ordinance, easier to do this. Uh, much more difficult to put, uh, to stop interest and whatever. Otherwise, we could never have taken a loan from the IMF. Hmm. That he didn't uh -huh. do anything about. Yeah, yes. Other basic tenets yes. of Islam he didn't bother about. He came down hard on women and women's, although the women's movement is very old in the subcontinent, but it took a different turn and became much more uh, militant. militant and open and widespread. Yes. The women's issue in during this time. It mobilized a lot of women. And uh, many groups got many mobilized. Groups, yes. uh, one, just generally, how do you feel about that movement? And then there has been also some debate during this time among the groups. So one would like to talk a little about different positions that the groups took, even though at one level there was an alliance. Uh, so what do you think, uh, what are your own impressions of the movement of these 11 years? And then more specifically, one will talk about the debates. I think, Mani, that these 12 years for women have been very important. 
and respect it in one way, Zia gave us the strength to mobilize ourselves. <laughs> so, because it was, everybody went to Zia, what he was doing. Then with even women with different opinions and different thoughts got together and said, we will not allow this much and no much, no more. So they did get together. And the most important thing was that even if one couldn't get masses, they got the thinking women to be able to put this forward that we are not, we are not agreeable on this. And that they conveyed this in many ways abroad, where our propaganda could be published, where people here were reluctant to publish. So we became an important factor, so much so that when Zia went to America, the first question which was asked was, you know, what about women? Mm -hmm. So it was that that was a big role which the women did play. And for that, the credit goes to all the enlightened women who came together to be able to put this forward and uh, uh, work together unitedly. Now the differences arose when organizations like us who were together with the WEF and all that, was that we thought that uh, this is a political struggle. That unless we also scream against the authority, martial law, we, will, we cannot achieve this because it's a joint struggle of men and women together jointly. And that we should persuade men to come and go with us, march with us, and say, yes, these are women's rights. And that becomes a political thing. Some women's, women thought that this was not right, that if we bring this, we will not be able to do this much, and therefore we should leave it at only a women's, you know, women doing their thing. Now, I don't think that, uh, we, I didn't I personally agree, I thought it, it was a political struggle and it should be made political, and eventually it did become political. But I don't know, maybe they were right to this extent that uh, uh, they thought it should be left at uh, women's, uh, uh, on women's level, because they thought maybe martial law clamps on us and we won't be able to do anymore. Because yeah. women were the first to come out, ah. which is very important. Yes, and they thought that this. But I must say, the women showed great bravery during Bhutto's, uh, when Bhutto's uh, sentenced to death. Now, those people, now, a Pakistan People's Party was not organized party. Yes. But who came out? No man came out. No footsteps were heard. Only the footsteps of women. 40 women, 50 women, 100 women, they gathered everywhere. Protested. They had the guts to do it. They were not organized by us, you know, by the, but they were there. And eventually then they came up with us also for this uh, struggle. But then the women, uh, Bhutto's regime did give women this confidence that you have the right to speak and come out this much. How much more, I cannot say. As they gave this much right to a worker, they'd raise your head. Whether they did anything for the worker or the peasant, <laughs> Hardly yes. anything. Yeah. But the worker did put up his head mm. and said, spoke back. Enough for the worker who then now voted back Benazir. Mm. Benazir came back because people said there's a debt we have to pay. The village people say that openly. Mm. Benazir came in. Now, of course, they have to show what they can do themselves. Next elections will not be like this. And we women, my feeling is that we women should continue struggling for our rights going on pressurizing the government, first of all, we should tell them that please bring out this report published by the commission set up by Zia, which brought out a report which was then hidden and not published because three-fourths of it contains truth. Women's <coughs> oppression, how women are treated in ways they didn't want to bring that up. But even Bhutto's earlier report, Bhutto's report, That's quite good. Uh, very good, but uh, that has also not come out. That's not come out. It should come out. Let people understand things. Why is this being hidden? Why is this, this not coming out? We should, we, we should jointly ask, demand that this report should come out so people can discuss it. And we have demanded a number of times, we have written letters that it should be, uh, this should come out. But uh, it, it, it doesn't mean, many women now think that the whole thing is done, Benazir is there. There are women, I know, who say it. It has diffused them. It has diffused them. Well, yes, it would diffuse. There's no doubt because Zia's fight was a different fight. It was in the same way. The fight against imperialism was tremendous. A moment your own government came, all those people who were anti-imperialists then vanished into different lanes. They were not there. Only some of us were left to fight the government in your own country. Because the moment you fought them, they said, you are not patriotic. You are with India. You are with this. You know? So all those women who came for anti-imperialist struggle, they gradually went into the different lanes and came with the different governments outside. 
So this we must keep in mind that the struggle will have to continue until we get our rights, women's rights. And we have to continue the struggle along with the peasants. We have to continue the struggle along with the workers put forward their struggles. Because uh, it is not a wishy-washy thing that you say, uh, it's uh, sab theek hai. Sab theek nahi hai. We have to, until the struggle continues, until the left gets together and themselves say that, you know, we are becoming stronger, that these are the rights of the workers. This, I'm sorry, they will not get their rights. Nobody will speak on the behalf of the peasant. It's all very good. I'm a very good landlady. Mm -hmm. I'm very nice to my work. I give them medicines and I give them atta and I give them uh, something to eat and I look after them when their children are ill. I take them to the hospital. Mm -hmm. I'm a very good landlady. You must like me. Mm -hmm. But the real strength of the feudalism is still there. Unless, unless it's completely demolished, you cannot improve the status of women here or anything else. We can fight for it. We will. But we must say why it is this. There was another point of difference between Anjuman Jamuriyat or Sankhawateen and some organizations and say uh, Women's Action Forum Lahore uh, and others. Uh, on One was what you say political, but I think that was more of a misunderstanding uh, because those in WAC will argue that we were actually doing it because it was the only space. It allowed us a space, not because we thought the women's issue was not yes. political. Hmm. But the other one was that uh, WAF was countering or struggling or trying to mobilize women uh, by saying what you said earlier, that if the state is saying that uh, religion, you know, the mullah is saying religion is this, we would say, no, this is not the correct Islam. There is another interpretation and if you go by that interpretation, all these things are jayas and allowed, etc. And uh, I remember uh, the discussions we were having, Ranjuman at that point had the view that we should stay out of the religious thing altogether and struggle only as uh, workers or citizens, etc. and not even discuss Islam. So there was this uh, other question of whether uh, organizations, when the state is uh, using Islam so much and is saying that these are non-West, these are Westernized and pro-India and pro-Russia um, and pro-whatever, uh, and people do have a belief in, in uh, in religion, good, bad, no, whatever, yes. it is, it's there. That the WAF position, for example, was that to mobilize these women, to not alienate ourselves from uh, these women, uh, one should say that, in fact, Islam gives you these rights to fight. And Anjuman was taking the position at that time that uh, we shouldn't be approaching religion at all. What do you feel about that now? I feel the same way. I feel that the moment you get into the religious platform, like Mr. Bhutto did, he then got on the religious platform. Uh, you know, instead of speaking of the poverty of the people, hunger of the people, that you know we wanted to give, get roti kapra and makan to you, instead of speaking that you know you are still living in those horrid places and so on and so forth, he started coming on the Islam says this and Islam says that. No, Bhutto could never have of that. Impossible. Madhudis would win. Every time they have got 101 theories. You and myself might have read one Quran and something. They have read 10, 20 books. Take one book which, 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 on which I have mentioned once on this religious basis. I have said it openly. Behti Zewar sab ladkiyon ko jab unki shadiyon ko dena chahiye. It is a third rate pornographic book. Yes, it is. It says how you should lie down, mm. what you should do, mm. and a man is all powerful. Mm. When a man comes, press him. When a man comes, do this, please him. And if you are not well dressed, when a man comes back, he has the right to beat you. Mm. This is the book Ziaulak is suggesting to people in Kanate College because it should be handed over to the girl when she gets married. On this subject is the only subject of Islam which I spoke because I read the book. It is just nonsensical. I said, never will our daughters should get this book. Never should they feel that they are suppressed. Never should they feel that Islam is this and so on, you know, other. But, Bunny, while I don't, I don't mind. Now I feel that I don't mind your people having, you know, bringing Islam as the right and so on. Just to put them off slightly. But I still feel that when you're doing mass work, please don't bring religion into it. No, but in mass work, uh, our experience has also been that. Uh, Precisely now, after 12 years of Islam so much, 
that uh, women and the Malvi, whatever, have got through, uh, you know, the stage, sorry, and the Malvi have got into the minds of women too. So one does get these questions of, you know, uh, the Mullah says this, and the state says this, and the whatever. Oh, you and you have to reply to, by saying that the Quran does not say this. It also, you have to use the other ayat. And... Um, it is no harm. I don't think there's no, no harm. I don't think there's so any harm. It, sometimes it helps. I mean, why should it work? It should... It, it does people. help in mobilizing as well. Uh, WAF, for instance, in Lahore uh, mobilized much more than WAF Karachi. Yes. Now, WAF Lahore mobilized because a lot of the women that they mobilized were believing Muslims. Yes. Not in a, in no, a no, fundamentalist way. Yes, that's fine. And the other thing is, which is an intriguing question, that Jamaat Islami women, right wing women, are always able to mobilize more women than we are. Yes. They were 10,000, 20,000, etc. How does that happen? But the one thing is that they got paid workers. If they tell the paid workers to bring their wife, everyone, everyone wants to yeah. bring their wife to come out. Jamaat people. Jamaat. But they also have a dedication and a fanaticism. Uh, I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure because if you discuss this matter with some of your very close friends, they'll tell you how they came to them and said, you are Jamaat Islami, what I mean, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. How was that particular person, Jamaat uh, studied abroad, ye, wo, ye, ya, paate, koi pa, aisi baat nahi. Mm -hmm. So it is just, it's just political. But they are political failures. You see, they might be able to organize. Bunny, you give me please five lakhs a month. And I have paid workers everywhere. They'll also work for me. They'll be dedicated. They also believe in what I say. And they will be able to bring out women. Paid workers. Two, if they had such big backing, why don't they win seats in the assemblies? People just ignore them. Twelve years of propaganda on your television has been just mullahs. The result is Benazir. But even Benazir could not say that she was not a Muslim. She will never say that she no. is a Muslim. Yeah. No. She's not only a Muslim, she but believes she, in lots of peace and yes. uh, these But things. she also used, meaning she talked a lot about Islam and you know, every way that I say my namaz and I'm fasting and uh, all this business. Because she, Felt. no party today can stand and win an election saying we are the secular state or we want secularism, etc. Benazir said one or two nice things, Bani. First, they asked her, what is your feeling on religion? She said, religion should be, I feel that religion should be a private matter. Um, how would the oppression of women go? Because normally the thing has been that the women mobilized as a part of the Communist Party. But we have seen that in, in the countries that have the communism, in fact, now there's even a drive for uh, autonomous or independent women's struggles, that just being a women's wing has not, in fact, mobilized women. What is your present position or I, how do you feel about I that? Think, I think that the uh, separate women's wing should not be there at all. I feel that it should be a part of the whole struggle and that women should continue demanding things for themselves and, you know, their rights. And so. But it will be the last thing, Bani. It will not be easy to break those thousands of years bonds of saying women. For instance, in Soviet Union, even today women complain that we, when we come back, it's, we have to cook. Why? It's, it's a small thing. And they've been uh, 70 years now. It is, it is a, when these long-term things have been happening, and your mind is with that, it takes time to break with those things, and that they automatically, will, I feel, will break those times. When you, your economic standards go on coming up, you feel it a moment. Now, for instance, take a woman in our country today. 20 years ago, if I went to a house, I'm just giving you an example. And you met a, a mother and her daughter was working. She would stay. I can't Not that she's working, that was a crime. Then, because she had nothing to do, she was waiting at You go now. Same women, ask them, your daughter, she's gone to work. Uh, you tell your department this company. Uh, with a completely different tone and so forth. It is because it's become necessity. No. When the boy goes to ask for a girl's hands, is she working? Previous, previously it was, she's not working. So you talk about I mean, we've seen this with our own. The girl, she could come to the school. But the main criticism women's groups get from left parties is that by having autonomous uh, women's groups, 
uh, or women's organizations. Uh, it is uh, diffusing the left struggle and negating the left struggle and that once the revolution comes, everything will be all right no. and this is a struggle that will come. This is what the left... Yes, but it's wrong. I, I feel that you, you, you have the right, women have the right to, you know, whatever they think is suppressing them, they have the right to go on. But at the same time, Bani, they must cooperate with that because they feel that is the those are the parties who are really going to liberate them and no other party. No, cooperation is one thing, but the left no says that you should not because you deflect, from, you shouldn't bring up women's issues because women's issues come into the home and cause problems even within the home. Mm -hmm. And they say that you are deflecting from this and that actually once we've got rid of private property, once we've taken over state power, the issue, it will just be social remnants and it will finish anyway. This is the, the it classic is, left it position. It is a classic left position, uh -huh. but it is not a right position. It may be the classic right. So because even in the movement of the revolution, you feel the women and men must keep changing the attitude to women. It is a process of struggle. Yes. It has to go on even after the revolution. It must go on even after the revolution. You have to go on telling them that they are the demands. Because, Bani, this... So As an independent women's organization, it should continue after the revolution. Yes, why not? Because then the our joint struggle is there. We have brought about the revolution. You have brought. You are also a part of it. We are also a part of it. You have brought. It. But then, it's, as a matter of fact, then it is more important. Just now, when people said that, I know how they said that. They said that because during the anti zia thing, people want you to get out for Zia's crimes together. But it's not just uh, the Zia, say, even the debates uh, uh, between Lenin and Kruskaya and Lenin and the others at that time. The Rosa women were, and all those people, were, yes. Uh, they kept saying to Lenin at that point that we have to keep organizing women through the struggle and post the struggle. And Lenin, actually these leftists only pick up these sentences from Lenin. Right so they are picking up what was also Lenin's position. Bani, now El Pansi is now 70 years of revolution in Soviet Union. The, uh, at the time, when some friends used to criticize Lenin and Stalin, what did we do? We visited to cut them off. No. Mm -hmm. But as it happened, they were right. Bureaucracy, right. Everybody saw. Look at the miners today in Soviet Union. They're saying we are, they're against the bureaucrats. And it's a worker state. Mm -hmm. So the thing is that you, I think women, because they're the most suppressed, they will have to continue their fight until they get their rights. Now, I have seen in Soviet Union, for instance, women at very high positions, higher than their husbands. And it still creates, to some extent, resentment from the men. Because if I, a man goes from the office to say, I want to meet uh, Anna Karenina, say, her husband is there, he's not. And Anna Karenina, she's a main, main person. There is resentment. Therefore, there are more there are divorces, quite a lot of divorces in Soviet Union. Because this is a question I asked. The most intelligent women I met in Soviet Union, some of them are devils. And I said, why? Why are there so many divorces? Then I put this forward to them. I said, is it because you are more important and you have got better pace and you are on top? They said, yes, maybe that is one of the things. The men couldn't take it. Men couldn't take it. Even now to this day. After 17 years of revolution, they still cannot take that fully. So there will be a struggle, there will be a continuous struggle against all this and for the rights of the women and to bring them forward as we think is best, even if there is a revolution. That's, that's my even, But even the, the Soviet state has not helped. In the, I mean, they've helped. It has helped. I mean, I'm not saying at all that the Soviet women have not made tremendous strides in 70 years. But the Soviet state also has been passing laws that reinforce a type of, uh, or even making statements, like one was very upset with Gorbachev's statement saying that women are important as wives and uh, daughters and whatever, because actually um, women are important as people. People. And their role, and for him, for the head of a state hmm. who has a lot of influence, then it creates an ideology. Yes, yes. No, I think a baby. Uh, women are human beings, like men are. They are, more, they are, they are their own emotions. But women are more, will change more easily because they have to, something yeah. to gain yes. and men won't change. Yes. That's the problem. The women have changed. So which women is vast change. Because uh, uh, they earn, they are independent, they have nurseries. And the best thing which, which, which I saw in Soviet Union was that when women are working, they're completely relaxed because here's the nursery next door. 
You can go and nurse your child, come back, you know, they're in good hands, doctors, this, that. They've got a lot of facilities. Yes. But I still feel that there is resentment when a woman does something better. I, because I, a lot of women get beaten up at home by their husband. See, this is why I want to come back to huh, the family. Huh. The, the family, I think Engels there was right, that the oppression within the family is a, is a problem. And the Soviet women have a problem that they may be working, they're doing everything, they have facilities, and they come back and this man comes back drunk, and what does he do? He takes out all his frustration, he beats her up. But they are a problem. They are and a problem. Uh, in fact, there was this movement to ban alcohol in the Soviet Union because, because, of, this, it. because of this. There movement. is a problem. There is a problem. Um, this is a problem. And, and, well, the, and oh, the violence against women. Because, uh, Bunny, that attitude of women being a property. Now, to t why, why is you, that not gone? Because of the attitude of men, they say, Bunny. Because they, in one like, thing, in theory, is different. A man wants a woman and so on and so forth. And it, but in our country, too, for instance, lots of people who even are very progressive and, you know, advanced and say, you know, this, you know, uh, the de demand, even if the men are very equal, and this, their demand is again on women, you know. And housework is still a woman. Housework is still a woman. A woman and looking after a child is still a woman. And uh, of course, one has servants and all that in, in, in these households. I remember at one meeting, uh, Imran Khan's mother, who used to be in school, uh, school with me, she says to me, Tara, why are you in this thing? Oh, baby, we've got cars. We've got servants. What is oppression? We can go and buy jewelry whenever we like. What are you here fighting this? <laughs> wasting, wasting your time. So I'm saying that, that <laughs> attitude is all there. Yes. And women who are very comfortable and who have homes and so on and so forth. They have uh, this feeling, what the hell is this fight going on for? They're all right. They whistle in the car, is there? They want to go shopping. They are feeling bored they go, going to shopping. And so I, I laughed quite a lot when she said that. <laughs> Now, that, now, men like that, like Bhishti A woman should be well. You go to these, you go to uh, Amtul's house, Amtul uh, um, Zafrullah, beautifully dressed, even in bed, <laughs> lying down. But uh, I look a sweepress, for worst, I was in a sweepress. A beautifully dressed, you know. Hi, hi, please, you know, like, but that is uh, the vision which uh, Zia gave and other people. Yes, that's all the women should be well dressed and making yourself beautiful, and that is the whole thing it starts and ends there. You are a property, you are property, you are just property, and woman. Because so used to it that she wants to feel the problem. It's not only altogether men, it's also a woman's fault. We want to feel yes, TK. We are property. And when you liberate from that, then you're called. Who's got ye ha khailata, ye ha wo hai, kharaab hai, buri hai, fulani ke paas chaka fulsana ka tere. And some of your own people who have been working with you will say that. So the, the thing is that the most difficult question is the question of women. Even your question, even after the revolution, one will have to continue fighting for your rights as equal human beings. This is my thinking. So this is what now, coming back to the movement in Pakistan, uh, which has become difficult because it's diffused, you have a woman prime minister, whatever, people are feeling easier, they think that maybe the women's issue is... Oh. Although the, the violence has increased, in fact, when one reads the paper. Uh -huh. um, but what? how do we mobilize now? Because it was easier to mobilize against a dictator and uh, a known enemy. Now it becomes difficult because if you mobilize against Benazir, it's also woman against woman, which becomes a trickier issue. Uh, no, I would say one shouldn't organize against Benazir because by organizing Benazir today is giving full stand to IJI, which one would like to. But the thing is, it should be organized against the uh, uh, issues. I mean, Benazir takes good issue. Mm -hmm. For instance, I'm, only yesterday we had a meeting women uh, on this uh, fun issue. We said, no, we must make a big mobilization. And say, why? I mean, why shouldn't the Jibula be a party to the whole thing? No, but women, this is um, this is another interesting uh, thing now that you mentioned it. We've had a lot of meetings in Lahore in the last four months. Only the women's organizations are talking, taking a straight stand on Afghanistan. Yes. Even the trade unions and whatever are not mobilizing on it. 
Now, even today, in this new regime, it is still women in the forefront of these uh, major issues, which are not women's issues, no. but taking a straight line, uh, saying that we should get out of Afghanistan, which is not our business anymore, and um, the Afghans should go. But we were ready to mobilize. We were saying we can bring out three or four hundred. It was the left and the trade unions who uh, backtracked on that. No, that's a bit, um, I don't agree there, Bunny. I, uh, frankly speaking, I don't agree there. Because they were, I was asked only yesterday by women, what, uh, what is going to be our line on Afghanistan? I said, we have to criticize. We must do it thoroughly. And after Benazir came into power, we held a demonstration. After Benazir came into power, I went and spoke in Peshawar of saying what the Arabs were doing to the women. And they were being sold and so forth. I brought up this issue a number of times. And then I asked our uh, uh, Benazir's government that, please, uh, deport them at once. After all, they must have got passports to enter our territory. Deport them at once. This is what they do to the women. I feel for these things we should organize jointly together as we did before. Yes. Of course, absolutely. This is the question. But the men, when you were saying that women must work with the left, the problem is that women are ready to work, the left is not working at all. But the left is what we That's what I told you. That's the bigger problem. Because we, as you said, we I mean, it's not a question now, one has found, of women aligning with the left, women's groups. It is the left who should be aligning because women are able to mobilize much more. But that's what I'm saying. And they're more in the forefront. But Bani, because we take issues because we are more bold. I'm telling you, Bani, do you know that in Bangladesh issue, Bangladesh, there were women who were sitting and saying, Kiji koi harajni jumari fauj maa kar rahi hai, unki nasal hi badal jayegi. And they were all, the people you know, Bani and yes. people I know. They were saying that very openly. Uh, when we women demonstrated against that, we were arrested by Yaya Khan. And how many women were there? Six. And the whole of the whole. But I remember when we went to Beaten Road, I went with you. Went with the, yes, you. But again, it was only the women in 71. We only the women. Get, we couldn't get other people. We out. couldn't get other people. But that's what I'm saying, Bunny, because the left is not mobilized. It's not It's not uh, a, a, an organized thing. If, if the left was organized, the things would be different. So but then how can we say that we should work with them? They are not working. But we should persuade them to work with us. <laughs> we should persuade them to work with us, but they're, but they're not. They're not working. They're not right, right, right. And this Afghan issue, there were women, six women standing on the mail. And no, we had a petition campaign, as you know. Uh, all the signatures, we got several hundred signatures. They're all women against the Afghan policy. I guess. I know. No, the men wouldn't sign. I mean, they didn't get to sign. Because I think they're also afraid that uh, People's Party must be not afraid also because of you know their policy being the same. Uh, and uh, they don't want to uh, uh, touch this IGI as well as them. And uh, the only people who are left are ourselves. Mm -hmm. And we are going to. I mean, I sent telegrams to Benazir on this issue. So did we. Uh, we sent telegrams for God's sake, what is happening there. But, uh, and I got, uh, you got the letter on uh, signed that also. We should continue. It's all wrong. It's all wrong. On every issue, which concerns us, and I think Afghanistan concerns us very much, uh, because our, our children have become drug addicts on that mm. whole thing, and lots of other things. Uh, we should uh, we should take a stand. If anybody wants to come, they are most welcome. If they don't want to come, we will still continue. All right. We have, we have done that before. We we'll continue doing that. We do. It doesn't matter. And there's no question of saying, "Hey, ab es is wakat ye baat na karna, ye uske khilaf jayegi." No. In these issues, big issues, we must. And this goes against both. IGI is more of a mm. brother-in-law, son-in-law of the mm -hmm. Mujahideen than they are. So uh, the question doesn't arise. So we must, you know, put our protest. Mujahideen, the, the, the war must stop. We are against this war. And what is happening, we are against that. And so we do not, we even wrote to this that we do not agree with this interim government which is being formed by ISA. It was. Mm -hmm. You are interfering. Yes. We also took the stand yes. that you cannot interfere no. in another state. I mean, Najib has shown, Najib has shown you in Jalalabad that well, he is organized. Women are on the forefront fighting there. They have invited us ten times to come and see, to see them fighting there. They have invited us to come to the uh, to Kabul, which we might be going. But the thing is, that women are fighting. Why are they fighting if they, they have not got anything? Obviously, they must have gained something that they are fighting. Why are they women fighting? They are running back. Even the Mujahideen are running back. They said, we don't want to fight and kill each other. They are destroying their own cities for nothing. Because the uh, Mr. Thompson, who has come, wants to do it. The, if the left had a little bit of guts, if they had the courage of their convictions, they wouldn't have allowed Thompson to put his, put his foot down on Pakistan. But what can we do? Only women will go.
I mean, why should he be there? Why, why is he using our territory to do all this, uh, this dirty job? You see, Bani, the thing but why are we lending ourselves? Why are we lending ourselves for it? We should be there protesting. Any damn general comes from uh, America, we should be protesting even if we attend. But you'd be surprised, people are not prepared. Huh? It was very difficult to take people, first of all, to USIS. And we did it. We said, if you want to come, you can come, otherwise we are going. Then about 15, 20 people came marching in. So it is that they, I don't know what their beliefs are that they are strong enough for them to be able to put up a fight. If they can take out the, I mean, they're beating the sake of But specific thing. And now, supposing it, Bani, if Thompson had come to Islamabad and we were 15, not more, 15. International press would have taken it They go, they go with two people. They were like, there was protest when Thompson arrived. Now that would have gone in our favor. Even if we didn't achieve anything in our country, we'd have achieved uh, a propaganda value outside. So these things happen. And they, uh, we have to, as you said, women take the land. Yes, we, have to, we have done so before. And, we do it. and uh, this um, East Pakistan thing, we were all these men. Mm -hmm. After all, they all believe we, we, we were women, six, seven women, saying that no. If, Army takes action, that will be the end of Pakistan. And nobody else was coming with us. So it is also political thinking and political reading and so on so on. And I think that the, our left here is to do a lot of more political reading. It's just confused reading. I don't think they'll be able to reply to many questions you put them. <laughs> because they don't read. You know, I, 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 frankly speaking, I feel quite baffled sometimes because I don't, um, I read, but not that much. And when I discuss things with Tarikam just thus, I don't know what I'm saying. If, if I don't agree with him, I just I fail to convince him, you know. Sometimes I don't agree with certain issues. I fail to convince him because he has read hundred times more than I have. For instance, now in this, uh, the book he's written, um, um, Scott Richard's book, Revolution from Above, mm. and he's praised him in many ways. But he's criticized him also, mm. thinking that this, this won't come up. And he's said, uh, uh, is saying this. And Now, uh, some of the things, they are beyond me to understand, except that I know their bureaucracy work. But then let me say that all the time. And we were saying, they just Trotskyites and they, you know, they don't know what they're talking about. And now they're all speaking, they think, think they've been published in the uh, um, um, Soviet Union, and we feel that they were right and we were wrong. So what they said about uh, And one should admit it. One should admit it openly. I mean, for instance, when they talked about Stalin having done these things, we used to say this is Western propaganda. I, I said it myself. It's Western propaganda. We can't decide the. But that means it was all true. What, what they've come out with now? Yes, they were right. So we can't be that prejudiced, you see. So we have to learn with uh, we go on learning all our lives and uh, criticizing ourselves to be able to improve. There's no question of saying that you know rigid in your politics. You are doing this. We have to learn from the past and uh, uh, move forward to towards future, to a very happy future. And as far as women are concerned. I feel that the fight will go on even after the revolution.